don't get this. This thing is wearing me down. Am I cursed? Is is God punishing me? Am I being punished? What is going on? I don't get this. I don't know why that had to happen. I don't know why they're rising up against me. I don't know why things go the way they go. What is wrong with me? What is going on? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Remember that word may. <clears throat> Go back to that in a minute. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. May means he can't devour you unless you let him. Sometimes, I love the word vicissitude, so let me wear it out. Sometimes the vicissitudes of life can really wear us down. Things can go against us, things that sometimes, I know there are times in, in our lives when we wonder, is there a curse going on here? Am I being punished for something? Well, no. <laughs> That's part of being on the devil's turf. Now, this is all God's. Remember, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and all that dwell therein. But he gave a certain amount of authority to Satan, and that happened as a result of sin. He gave a certain amount of authority to the devil. And when this world is renewed, replenished, and revamped, and Jesus comes with his millennial kingdom, that's when things will be the way they should. But for now, we have to deal with the vicissitudes of a fallen world. So when you wonder why things go wrong with good people, why God's people have to suffer, why God's people have to put up with attacks and friction and conflict and all kind of mess, that's the reason. Because of the world we live in, that's why we must pray as often as possible because this is a battle, a spiritual battle. And the more authority you take over everything you can think of, the less the devil can attack you. You have to cover yourself. You have to shield yourself. You have to bathe in the word of God and the blood of Jesus. You have to rebuke, bind, cast down every imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. You've got to shut down those emotions and cast all your care on God because he cares for you. So you have to remember that all of this is why we have the Bible. All of this, all of these vicissitudes of life is why we have Jesus, why we have access to him. Some of you won't open that door. He's been knocking and knocking, but you won't open it for whatever reason. But for those who do, remember to cast all your care on him, all your care, not some of them. See, some of us, <clears throat> some of us are control freaks. We don't realize it, but we're control freaks. Some of us, we, we want to handle it. We want to deal with this. We want to say what we got to say. Sometimes some of that stuff that you feel like you just have to say, guess what? <laughs> you don't. And sometimes you make matters worse by what you say and how you say it. And you don't see it because you're not humbling yourself, saying, God, show me what other people see. Show me how I come across. So a lot of times problems exist because we won't look at ourselves. Sometimes Problems exist because we didn't acknowledge God in all our ways so he could 
direct our paths, right? And some problems exist because of straight out lack of discipline, or in in my case, I, there are areas where I have lack of discipline and I have to stay on top of that or things can unravel very quickly. And I, and I, if they do, I can't blame anybody but me. I can't blame the devil. I can't blame Sister Applehead or Brother Bumblebee. I have to blame myself. I have to humble myself and say, Lord, I am so... I can't always say I'm sorry for what I did because I enjoyed doing what I did or spending what I spent or going where I went or whatever. But now I'm in a in a financial pit hole. Lord, would you help me? Would you rescue me from my own mess? And it's it's like the baby that dirties his diaper and he he's crying and he comes running to mama. Mama's trying to potty train him. But he lets her rip, and then he's got a mess on his hand, and now he wants mama to clean him up. Well, we do that with God all the time, y'all. <laughs> I know I do, <laughs> but I got enough sense to say, okay, Lord, it's my fault. It's not my brother. It's not my sister, but it's me standing in the need of prayer. Rescue me, <laughs> please, Lord, <laughs> from me. So we have to remember to humble ourselves and know that we need help. I always need help. I don't know about you, but if it wasn't for God, I'd be a a, 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 a bumbling mess. I would be tore up from the floor. And it's only God that makes me stand. It's only God that helps me. It's only God that gives me a mind to stay ahead of things. That reminds me of things before they get out of hand. It's only God. So understand that your help is in God. In this life, in these last days where things look like they're breaking out on the left, breaking out on the right, and all hell is breaking loose, and the devils and the demons are on everybody's behind, and they're, they're out there wreaking havoc, and all kind of people are out there playing games with folks, money, and 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 uh, all of these fishing things where people are trying to rip you off and take what belongs to you because they're too lazy to work for themselves. Whatever the case is, or just because it's fun getting away with something. Whatever their reasons are. The bottom line is this world is full of sin and full of sinful people. And when we know that this world is so full of sin and so full of sinful people, there's no way you there's no way you can come through this whole world and not be and and go unscathed and unscarred. Good. Okay, here's an ex. Thank you, Lord. Here's an excellent example. Picture yourself. You just go to the store. It's one of my analogies. You know how I do that. You go to the store. You buy yourself some beautiful shoes. I mean, they are spotless they're shining they have that brand new smell to them and you're getting ready to go somewhere really nice you're going to an evening affair and you're you're dressed to the nine boy i mean you from head to toe you are it and now you got these beautiful shoes to go with your new outfit and everything is nice and new but it's raining outside and you have an umbrella you got a raincoat so your outfit is covered, but those brand new shoes are walking through the rain on a dirty, on a dirty ground, muddy, dirty shoes, brand new now. So when you get inside, you got to head to the restroom so you can wipe off your shoes because so they can look as pretty as they look when you pull them off the showroom floor in the store. Because of the elements, your shoes are dirty. Not because something was wrong with your shoes when you bought them at the store. It's because of the elements. So even though the shoes are brand new, even though the shoes have not been anywhere where they shouldn't, even though the shoes, there's nothing wrong with them. They were made well. They're beautiful to look at or handsome to look at. The bottom line is, once they step out into the elements, they are no longer clean. They're no longer brand new. Once you put your foot in that shoe, it's no longer brand new. So understand 
It's the same with living in this world. Many of you ask, why do bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen to God's people? Why do bad things happen to, to uh, you, you know, why must they happen to the degree they happen in? Why do people do people wrong? Why do people come at good people? Why do Christians fight each other? Why, 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 why? We got a thousand and a thousand million questions, right? A zillion. Let's go with that number. Ad infinitum, never ending. But guess what? God is the answer. No matter how many questions, no matter how many people scratch their heads and they cannot even come close to answering your questions, your quandaries, your wonderings, God is the answer. Always remember that. So know that you're in a dirty, soiled, contaminant world. Sin sick, baby. And you're dealing with sin sick people. You're dealing with a lot of sin sick Christians. You're, and because of that, you're going to deal with friction, unnecessary friction. Why? Because sin sick Christians are full of sin sick emotional scars and they live out of their emotions. And when you live out of your emotions, every thing is a big deal. How could you say that about me? How could you do that to me? What did you mean? As a whoa, 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 Nelly. <laughs> Woo. That's when you got to still yourself and know that God is God because people will have your head spinning. You got me going in circles. They'll have you going around and round and round. I remember I was having a conversation with one of my friends the other night. And they said when they were going through one of their trials, and this was a born-again Christian, when they were going through one of their trials, putting up with one of their family members, they said, baby, I was popping, I was popping blood pressure pills like a kid pops candy. Mm -hmm. Life can do that to you. Life can have you so out of sorts. Life can have you chasing your tail and you're just going around in circles. You're not getting anywhere. But remember, when you cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you, you don't have to feel. You don't have to feel the sting. You don't have to feel the pain. You don't have to be coming apart at the seams, pulling your hair out at the roots. You don't have to be popping blood pressure pills like you're popping candy. You don't have to deal with any of that. We do, but we don't have to. So <clears throat> when you find yourself in a vicissitude, <laughs> trapped in a vicissitude. Some of those you've made yourself, like I made some of mine myself, some of my vicissitudes. I'm like, Lord, clean my diaper. I made a mess. If you could keep your emotions out of it and remember, this is a fallen world. Stuff happens. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. When you remember that no weapon formed against me will prosper. When you remember that God is for me and if God be for me, who can be against me? When you remember the scripture that says, I shall not fear what man can do unto me. When you remember the scripture that God is a very present help in trouble. When you remember what a friend you have in Jesus, you will not hit the panic button. You will sit your little happy hips down, be still, and know that he is God. No matter what, he is God. Huh? You know God is for you. You know you're in him and he's in you. So there is no need to fear. Why? Let me read why you have no need to fear. I want you to go with me 
to Joshua. Joshua, whoa, listen to this, y'all. Joshua chapter 1. I want you to hear this and put this in your spirit. And we're going to cut the message short. But I want you to hear this. Now, and there are, things, there are times in our lives when things die. People walk away. There are times we feel all alone and abandoned. When we feel like nobody gives a flying uh, uh, bag of chips for us. Nobody's thinking about us. They're out there patting the, the pockets of the rich while the poor are sitting there with, with nobody to help them out. Sometimes you feel that way. Listen to this. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. You know, when people die, you want to sit. You don't want to get up. You don't want to rise and do anything. You don't want to eat. You don't want to work. You don't want to do anything but mourn. Mourn the loss. But God says, now arise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all of its people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Do you know there are times when you're smack dab in the middle of mourning, when you're smack dab in the middle of hurting, when you're smack dab in the middle of confusion and loss, that God will tell you, get up and bust a move and do what I told you to do. And you're like, Lord, where's the mercy? Where's your compassion? Can't you see him hurting here? Yeah, he does. But he knows the solution and he wants you to get to it as quickly as possible. Number three, every place that the sole of your feet, excuse me, the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Listen, when you read this, a lot of promises are in here. Nobody can pull you down, baby nobody. When God is moving you up and you are up with bound and you're climbing that mountain, check it out, baby. God will not allow anybody to pull you down. My question to you is, will you? Will you allow anybody to pull you down? Because that's the only way it happens. When you live through your emotions, like we talked about a second ago, and you concentrate on the problem, it weighs you down. Everything is heavier than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And while it's heavy like that, that's when you, if you get caught up in your emotions, in the circumstances, in the vicissitudes, in the emotions and feelings and fears and intimidation and the worries and the anxiety, that's when it can slide you back down that hill. Don't let anything pull you down. Don't let not one monkey stop your show. Okay, so every place. We're, okay, let's go to verse uh, four. I already read this. Verse five. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, 
and then shalt thou have good success. How many of you are turning to God's word when, when things begin to unravel in your life? How many of you take a moment to say, Lord, talk to me, lift up my spirits. I'm scared. And I rebuke fear in the name of Jesus. I know it's natural to be afraid, but if I cast all my care on you, I don't have to, I don't have to dwell in fear. I don't have to wallow in self-pity. I don't have to feel like a victim of circumstances because I'm not. Because the earth is the Lord's. It's yours, Lord, and the fullness of my life. Everything about me is yours. So I have no need to fear because as you promised, as you were with Moses, so will you be with me. And if you're going to be with me, can't nothing hurt me unless I let it. So you have to remind yourself right there. That's the promise, y'all. Read those verses from verse one to verse eight. Read those verses, y'all. That'll keep you strong. You got to stay in God's word. You got to pray. You got to sit your happy hips down. Be still and know that he is God. Read Psalms 46. I don't care what's shaking, what baking, what's what's quaking. No matter what, God is the one who is ultimately in control. No matter what the devil shakes on this planet, God is the one. Remember that. God is the one. He is the top, the head honcho. He has no worthy opponent. He has no opposites. Satan does not qualify. Satan is an opposite to an angel, but not to God. Remember that. God is in a class all by himself. Amen. Praise his holy name. Be encouraged. Lift up your heads and hang low. Strengthen the knees that hold up your weight and walk forward, baby. Rise. Arise. Go over this, Jordan. Amen. God bless you.